Hello again, this is Alex with MasterChefsTrading.com and this is Market Recap for Friday, June 16, 2017. So, um, not much has happened in the stock market this week. Mostly the stocks kind of tre tre treaded water. Uh, Dow Jones did make fresh all-time high. QQQ is still pulling back from very overbought levels. And semiconductors, but not the biotech, is uh, doing most of the correcting. Financials are maintaining the last week's gain, and retail XRT is moved sharply lower and is really close to 52-week lows. And uh, industrial healthcare utilities had fresh, fresh highs, while real estate is just behind them. Um, junk bonds are selling off for a second week, and bonds in general are outperforming um, stocks for uh, this year. Uh, well, for the past few uh, months, actually. Uh, dollar is attempting to make a stand, and this is weighing on gold, I think. Uh, and uh, oil continued lower, while energy ETF XLE is attempting to bottom, so we'll try to see which one would be correct. And finally, natural gas prints a second hammer-like weekly candlestick. All right, uh, today... The video will be slightly uh, more brief than usual, so I'll move slightly faster. Uh, first, S&P 500 ETF SPY. Um, fresh highs did occur last week. This week, um, not much has happened, which has sort of kind of, you know, traded sideways, basically. Um, generally speaking, of course, I still think that this is a bullish chart, and I would not short it anytime soon. Notice that advanced decline line just hit fresh all-time highs. Advanced decline volume is actually not far behind. So if advanced decline volume hits fresh highs, I think I'll have absolutely no problems with um, stocks. In other words, um, I would be looking only to go long uh, and looking to uh, buy uh, on any kind of pullback, uh, any kind of meaningful pullback which is what we're doing at Master Chess Trading. Uh, this is a weekly chart for S&P 500. Uh, pretty much nothing has happened. We kind of traded sideways. Uh, for the week we gained 0.6%, but notice that last week also not much has happened. So uh, we are above the um, uh, resistance one yearly pivot point. So that's, uh, I think, uh, good news. Uh, and we could easily continue higher to possibly R2. Um, you know, this is a bullish, again, this is a bullish chart, so um, I think bullish resolutions are uh, more likely at this point. Here's Dow Jones Industrial Average, and this week there was a definite preference for, uh, you know, blue chip stocks and uh, mega, mega cap stocks. And notice that uh, Friday is a all-time closing high, and uh, Wednesday there was all-time highs. Advanced decline line also hit fresh highs. So this is uh, confirming a bullish posture. Now QQQ is the one that's doing most of the correcting. But notice that QQQ really rallied very hard uh, to fresh highs. And this advance was very steep. So this is normal. Um, you know, this is a normal Corrective, corrective period. Um, we're still actually holding uh, last week lows, so it is also possible, like I said last week, you know, this kind of large volume spikes on QQQ usually, but not always, indicate uh, that we have already made the bottom. And so far we're actually trading around that area, so maybe we have already uh, bottomed out and will rally higher. So let's look at Apple. Uh, um, briefly, sorry. I meant to say Apple. And uh, notice that Apple is still correcting, and Apple, of course, is a big part of the uh, QQQ. So if we don't hold this 142, I think we could easily correct lower for Apple. Uh, semiconductors, SMH, also very steep advance, so it was bound that we're going to get some sort of a sell-off. Um, now, we had, a, in March here, we had sort of an orderly pullback, 
but here we had a sort of a disorderly pullback, I guess, which is kind of collapsed on one day here uh, last week, and then now we're sort of still sliding lower for SMH, so I guess we're not yet done correcting. Biotech, on the other hand, actually is doing quite well, and we see fresh 52-week highs here for XBI, so uh, this is looking quite nice, and uh, again, at messagehastrading.com, we do trade XBI also uh, on the long side. Uh, I would not short it anytime soon. Now, uh, if you're a subscriber, I kept mentioning that um, I was worried about XLF. And the reason is because I thought that this was going to be like a head and shoulders kind of thing. And actually, we retested uh, April lows here. And I thought if we break those lows here, we could easily correct down. But we actually, you know, held support and rallied from here. So for now, the head and shoulders break uh, possibility is diminishing. And advanced decline lines are actually improving as well. So uh, XLF, uh, you know, it's, it's doing its part and it's moving uh, more or less higher. Uh, and that's, I think, is a good news for the general market. Now, if you heard uh, the news today, then you may have heard that Amazon is decided has decided to buy Whole Foods, and I'm guessing this was perceived really um, this was a bad thing for XRT for retail uh, because you can see we're approaching 52-week lows. We um, were as low as 39.16. And uh, 52 week lows are 38.95, so we're very close to 52 week lows. And you know, you, I personally don't like to be buying at 52 week lows. Sometimes you get, you know, a nice bargain. For example, here in 2016, yeah, you got a nice bargain here. But many times uh, you get something like this. So, for example, here's Kroger. Notice that it has been hitting 52-week lows since uh, last September. Kind of bounced, hit fresh 52-week lows here in March, bounced again, and today completely unraveled and lost 27%. So I think the you know when the security is hitting 52-week lows, then you probably don't want to be buying it. Maybe you want to be shorting it, uh, but uh, you know the same goes for uh, XRT is that maybe you maybe we'll consider shorting it actually sometime soon. Here's XLI, very strong sector, industrials, fresh all time highs. Uh, a lot of trucking firms in here. Um, at messagehistorian.com, we actually also have a uh, dividend aristocrats, um, kind of like a section of the. Uh, website and I uh, do some trading in uh, dividend aristocrats as well and there's quite a bit of dividend aristocrats in the industrial sector like FedEx uh, and a bunch of uh, trucking firms like Landstar uh, you know and some uh, other um, industrial firms so very strong um, very strong group actually right now uh, uh, also healthcare also very strong group uh, with biotech, so you know fresh all time highs. Uh, utilities intraday, but this is a fresh all time high by a couple of cents. So again, also a very strong group. Uh, also probably has to do something with uh, bonds uh, gaining, and when we get to bonds, I'll show you what I mean. And same goes for real estate. Uh, also, we're approaching fresh highs. Uh, we're very close to fresh highs for real estate. And um, a few weeks ago, I pointed out this hammer-like candlestick, and this one, act this one worked out really well. So overall, I think stocks are bullish, uh, again, but I think there may be kind of unwinding some of the overbought conditions and especially QQQ that I just showed and some of the um, highly uh, high technology sectors. So let's move on to bonds. So first I wanted to show this chart which is a, a relative chart S SPY divided by TLT. 
And uh, here, uh, um, this is a weekly chart, about uh, eight months. So here, uh, from November, obviously, into March, we could clearly see stocks on a relative basis outperforming bonds, a very defensive-oriented uh, TLT bonds. But here in March, we are now seeing sort of the opposite, where bonds in general are outperforming stocks. In other words, there is a rotation uh, that is going on where uh, investors are buying bonds and um, possibly selling stocks. So what does this mean for the general market? Uh, outperformance by bonds uh, could be due to seasonal factors because we are entering a summer month and this is a, in general a bullish period for bonds. Uh, another possibility is that perhaps under the radar there is some sort of a uh, increased fear uh, that is creeping into the market and investors are positioning themselves for a potential uh, drop in the stock market. Junk bonds, uh, you know, in general they correlate highly to the stock market so they have been moving also higher together with uh, stocks and even this week we put in fresh all-time high here uh, but then notice that we get down uh, on Thursday and on Friday, this is a, a Mariboso candlestick. So, you know, red, red Mariboso candlestick. So it showed a lot of selling pressure uh, uh, throughout the day. Now, you know, one or even two or three days does not the trend change. Uh, but, you know, we are, you know, we came a really long way from 2016 lows. Uh, into you know current all-time highs, so uh, I think you know I would not be surprised if we see some sort of a corrective pattern, uh, possibly before fresh highs are put in. Here's TLT, and this one I continuously pointed out. If you listen to my previous videos, I continuously pointed this out. I was wondering why we're having so much strength in defensive bonds. And this is as defensive as it gets. TLT is extremely defensive. So we had this breakout in April, uh, pullback. So this breakout, throwback, and then a fresh surge higher. And notice this surge was extremely strong. There was just a lot of gaps here. And even this week, we had a, quite a large gap um, right there. And this one shows that there's a lot of interest in buying bonds. Notice that also that we're about to have a bullish 50-day uh, over 200-day uh, moving average cross. This is a weekly TLT chart and notice that we have, I think, cleared this previous uh, resistance uh, from the previous lows and from the um, support break here. So TLT is now moving, you know, moved significantly higher of the uh, 2017 lows. Again, I wonder what is happening here and why we're having this sort of a um, strong surge in bonds. Uh, this is LQD, this is uh, investment grade corporate bonds. Uh, right here, these are actually fresh all time highs. So, also, we have a lot of buying present. Look at this very large surge a throwback, and then another surge characterized by presence of gaps, lots of gaps here. So in other words, a lot of interest in buying um, LQD here. Here's that same chart on the weekly time frame, and notice that uh, basically on the weekly time frame it becomes very clear, and I keep saying the same thing, that sometimes it's good to zoom out and just take a look you know, at the bigger picture. And the bigger picture here is quite clear. You know, we had a um, previous highs from 2016, uh, April, May 2016. We broke above them in, uh, I meant to say 2015. In um, March of 2016, we broke above them and continued to fresh all time highs. Then we had a very sharp correction that took us back down to exactly the breakout level. Uh, in November of this year. We held support, we bounced around several weeks there, we held support and surged. So, 
now we're at all fresh all time highs and uh, again at messagesrain.com we uh, i do have uh, a recommendation that was given out um, sometime in the past for lqd and i personally have a tlt position open uh, again i'll show my position one you know i'll uh, once i close the position i'll uh, post it as well so to summarize i wonder what is happening why would bonds outperform stocks um, Perhaps there is some sort of a um, under the radar rotation into more defensive sectors. Uh, again, this week is a little bit more brief than uh, normally, and here is US dollar in the daily time frame. So we had a support break uh, in May of you know in May of this year, and then we continued lower. In fact, we had uh, on Wednesday here hit fresh. Uh, 2017 lows but notice this very large um, rejection like candle um, on, on, on Wednesday here uh, so it's possible or in other words for now the lower prices were rejected and we had a more or less follow through the next day but then on Friday we sort of again uh, moved lower so Perhaps we are not yet done correcting. Uh, in fact, if we look at the weekly chart, you can see that we're still sliding in this uh, downward kind of channel. And uh, these are right here, uh, uh, 2016 November lows. And I think we're, we're going to get there. I think we're trying to retest those levels. So as the US dollar Notice that this is a uh, gold on a daily time frame in the upper part here. And here I have US dollar on a daily time frame as well. Notice that we're kind of been sliding downwards for the US dollar, while at the same time gold has been moving higher. So, you know, it's pretty obvious uh, negative relationship uh, for gold and US dollar. So correlation is quite negative, which is normal, which makes perfect sense uh, because gold is traded in dollars. So uh, notice that we have maybe this is a double top here at right 1290 1300 or so so maybe we made a double top uh, so far it's kind of indecisive and i don't see a major breakdown but then again i don't see obviously a major breakout yet so um, on the weekly time frame notice that we had two consecutive uh, shooting star like candlesticks uh, in a row so not something you want to see if you're a gold bull i'm a gold bull uh, but then again you know we have had similar patterns before for example here in uh, february march uh, we also had very big red candlesticks and then we moved higher and the same thing goes here in uh, may also but now it looks like we may be, uh, it's possible we were tapping out. Now, uh, bigger resistance, of course, is uh, ab above here at November uh, highs. So, again, if the dollar decides to retest November lows, I don't see a problem with gold moving up to possibly 1338. Uh, GDX is more volatile, um, of course, especially here on Wednesday, we had a big red candlestick. Um, we were, we're basically, I think, again, retesting uh, the levels from uh, May 24th, I believe, here. Um, not very conclusive yet, so it looks like we're trying to bottom here. Um, yeah, but uh, it's very, well, obviously, very choppy. And, you know, if we don't hold here, well, then, uh, you know, we could we could easily retest May lows. Um, I'm hoping this won't happen, because if we retest May lows, we may not hold them, and we could continue lower. Uh, in the weekly time frame, I thought we were done correcting, you know, from May, uh, but I guess not. Maybe we'll still need to trade sideways, um, maybe work off some of the overbought conditions. And uh, in fact, I think we have over um, 
we have pretty much worked off those conditions. So here is the uh, same thing, gold uh, miners ETF, GDX on the daily time frame. And here what I wanted to show that uh, some of my proprietary indicators, notice that we're uh, now at zero on this one, this indicator, which is percentage of stocks and the buy signal, we're now at zero. And normally, um, you know, when, the, when this indicator hits zero, we at least try to bottom and sometimes rally pretty hard. Like for example, here in March, we had a nice rally. And here in April, May, we had a pretty nice rally. And of course, here in December, it was a very nice rally. But here in November, we didn't, even though we had a improved um, uh, signal uh, in uh, GDX percent of stocks above uh, on a buy signal. Uh, here's another indicator uh, that I have. is a, It is ITBM, Intermediate Term Breath Momentum Oscillator. For GDX, it is currently already oversold, um, so hopefully we will um, stop falling and uh, rally from here. Again, I am uh, I am golden gold miners bull, and I actually still have a position in GDX open, uh, but I opened uh, back in uh, May. Good. Uh, let's move on to oil. So West Texas Intermediate. A light crude oil on a daily time frame. Uh, you can see a series. Well, we had one, two, one, two, at least series of uh, descending uh, peaks and troughs. Uh, so far, we have not made a lower low uh, below May lows, May lows, but we're getting there. Um, I still, I, I think that the oil is in a bear market, and I think we could be headed substantially lower. Here's oil in the weekly time frame. Uh, this is the fourth week in a row that we're moving lower. You know, we're already very close to May lows. Again, if we break those May lows, uh, we could see a substantial move lower, uh, maybe even below $39. Uh, energy ETF, XLE, it's attempting to kind of hold its own here and I mean, it, it, it hit fresh lows for the 2017 here and then there's a little bit of a bounce that's happening right now. Um, you know, who's going to be correct is difficult to say. Uh, here is XLE on a uh, weekly time frame in the upper part and West Texas Intermediate in the lower part here, and I showed this chart in the past many times. Uh, right now, I see a small divergence where oil is moving lower. We had two consecutive um, black weeks here, and or the red weeks, and um, XLE moved higher for the past two weeks. But we, XLE is notice it's approaching 52-week lows. So if we hit fresh 52 week lows, we could see something along the same lines as we had in 2015. Notice that we hit fresh lows and we just continued, we unraveled. And the same goes for oil. And again, um, I think I think if we if, if XLE gets to 52 week lows, I think oil uh, could be in a serious trouble. Here's natural gas on a daily time frame. So I think this is a bullish security. Uh, so we had 52 week highs, a very deep pullback, another surge, another pullback. So now it seems like we want to bottom here because especially on Thursday we had this really big hollow candlestick, very big surge here. Um, so I think we're trying to bottom in this area of 292.9 or so. Um, and the weekly time frame, you can see also two consecutive uh, hammer-like candlesticks. In other words, uh, buyers are stepping in and buying uh, at around you know uh, two dollars ninety cents or so. All right, uh, that's it for this week's recap. If you like what you're hearing, please uh, hit the like button below. If you have any comments uh, that you think are uh, constructive or useful, please comment below and of course share this video with others. Please sign up at messageastrain.com 
and uh, please stay tuned on how to find us on the internet. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. So I wanted to show you how to find us on the internet. Please go to masterchesstrading.com. We do have a trade alert services which are live right now. Uh, so please consider signing up for um, the service. It's only $24.95 per month. Also, if you sign up for our mailing list, you get a discounted uh, membership. Um, you get to see uh, what I'm buying and selling and which funds I'm looking at uh, potential uh, buy, sells, etc. There's quite a bit of uh, members-only content once you log in. There is um, uh, a lot of information about risk control, which is actually extremely important uh, for traders because the preservation of capital is really uh, one of the paramount um, to the uh, success as trading in trading there's quite a bit of psychology of videos uh, psychology of trading videos in the members only section as well um, also i'm uh, going to be starting a dividend aristocrats um, service uh, for now it's free for the members that are logged in uh, that are already paying members so uh, that's another benefit to signing up soon uh, the blog section shows uh, the previous uh, posts and market videos, of course. Um, also, I added a new section here, which is FAQs, and I do get quite a bit of questions about various, um, you know, ideas uh, and questions about the market. So, if you do have a question, please don't hesitate to send it in. Um, you know, send it uh, here, and uh, I'll be uh, able. Hopefully, I'll be able to answer it for you. All right. Um, Thanks for watching and please consider signing up for the trailer services. Bye-bye.